In this video, I will show you how you can draw an approximate surface charge distribution on a circuit. The first thing, so in this case, what I have is the most simple circuit that you can imagine. I have a battery, this is my power supply, and I'm connecting one side of the battery with a single, the same kind of wire, and that's it. Okay, one wire, the same everywhere, and one battery. Now, the first thing that I need to think of is the current. Okay, the current in the circuit will give me, um, will tell me what happens to the electric field around here. Now, experimentally, and I cannot show you this um, in, in the video, but so I'm asking you to trust me, experimentally, if you measure the current everywhere in the circuit, you will find it to be the same. So here, this is the electron current. This is the same. This is constant everywhere in this circuit, the same everywhere. Now I know the electron, and let's say I'm gonna make a note, this is based on experiment. Or experiments so this is the electron current and this is equal to the electron density eta times the area the cross-sectional area of my wire times the mobile electron speed now I know that the speed is equal to the mobility of electrons times the electric field now the electron mobility depends on the material the material that your wire is made of and the same thing for the electron density. Now, since this is the same, as I said, I keep the same wire, okay? This is one wire and it's always the same. If the wire is the same, then this means that these do not change throughout the circuit. So these are constant. Now, let's look at this. The left side, the current is constant. We know that from experiments. The right side, from theory, we know that since the density and the mobility depend on the material, and I have the same material everywhere, and the area depends on the shape of the wire, but I have, I have the same wire everywhere, this is constant. That means that the electric field has to be a constant. Okay, so this has to be a constant everywhere in this wire. Now, I'm going to start drawing the electric field arrows here. Since this is the positive side of the battery, I know that the electric field will need to point this way. So let's see, I'm going to color code this. So when you see green arrows, this refers to the electric field. And let's do, let's do one here, let's do one here, and let's do one here. Here it's gonna go up. And all of these arrows should have the same length. Okay, I'm doing my best to draw them in the same, having the same length. All right. Now, um, so I have the electric field and I know that I have the same magnitude of the electric field. How do I know that it's pointing to the left here? That's because that's the positive side of the battery and that's the negative side of the battery. I know that around the negative charges, the electric field points towards, for positive charges, it points away. Also, I know that electrons, let's change the color. So if I draw if I want to draw the electron current, since this is the negative side of the battery, I know that the electrons are gonna move that way. So this will be the direction of the electron current, I, okay? Because electrons will leave from the negative side of the battery and they're gonna go back to the battery from the positive side. Now, I do want to remind you the conventional current 
which is assumed to be due to positive charges that doesn't really exist but it's a convention that we have and we use it um, this will be the opposite direction let's use orange for that so if if the electron current if the electrons are actually moving clockwise then by definition the conventional current will have to move in the opposite direction and uh, as I said before, I want to remind you, the conventional current does not really exist. We just um, uh, It's just something that we created when we did not know um, that it is electrons, the ones that are moving. But it is a convention that we're stuck with and we use it. So, okay, so I have the electric field. Now, I need to think, how can I place charges on the surface here so that I have this shape, this um, these directions for electric field. Well, one thing, okay, one thing, I do need to make sure because the electric field has the same strength everywhere. The difference between my surface charges will has will have to be consistent throughout the wire. Okay, the difference. And let's see what color. Let's use. All right, let's use this one for our surface charges. I'm going to start. Okay, let's say let's place three pluses here. Now, in order to get an electric field to the left over here, I need to have less positive signs. And that's because these are going to create a stronger electric field to the left than this, the smaller electric field that these will create to the right. Overall, you get an electric field to the left. Now, when I, what is important here, because the strength of the electric field here and here is the same, I need to have the same difference. So if I go from 3 to 2 here, then from 2, I'm going to go to 1. And as I said, I'm going to repeat this because the strength of the electric field here and here is the same. Because the two electric fields have the same magnitude, the differences between the surface charges has to be the same. Now, you can see there is a problem here. Um, I have already used all of my positive signs. Okay, maybe I can go from one to none here, but I, I, I'm not, I have not arrived in the middle yet. So when you see something like this, just add some more. And then I go from four. Now I'm going to go to three. And then from three, I'm going to go to two. And let's see what happens here. So this is one. Okay. Now, um, I have not. Well, let's see. So this is the difference is one, one, one from one. Say I can say that I go to in the middle, I have none. So, you know, when you have one plus and when you have nothing, the difference is one. And now on this part of the circuit, I'm going to start including negative signs. This means that I will have an excess accumulation of, um, of electrons. So if you want, it may help you if I indicate the zero here. Okay, nothing. This is a zero. So from one plus I go to zero. From zero I go to one minus. And then from one minus I'm going to have two minus signs here. From two I'm going to go to three. And then from three I will end up having here four. As I said before, the important thing, now, now that I know that the strength of the electric field is the same everywhere, the difference between the surface charges has to be the same. Let's look at it. From 4, I go to 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, okay, 1 negative sign, and then minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. You can see the difference is the same everywhere. And this is how I illustrate with my surface charge distribution that um, that I have the same difference between two points throughout the wire. 
Now, I also want to, I, I want to finish this by mentioning what's going on inside the battery. So this is the positive side, that's the negative side. I need to find, I think I used this. The electric field inside the battery will point to the right, okay, towards the negative, away from the positive. Now here is the thing, take a look at this. The difference between these two is one. Let's take a look at what happens across the battery. Plus four, minus four. We're talking about a difference of eight here. The difference is one and it gives me this strength electric field and the difference here is eight. I need to do eight times essentially the length of this. That's gonna be a long arrow. So that's gonna be a huge arrow. Mm, let's say roughly, okay. I, I'm not sure if this is eight times that. The important thing is that the electric field inside the battery points to the right and it is much, much stronger than the electric field that you have in, in the wire. Now, the last thing that I want to mention, if somebody has, if somebody doesn't have four here, but they have five, or if somebody maintains a difference of two, not one that I did here, if their difference is two everywhere throughout the wire, is that a problem? No. It just, this is just a cartoon. It's an illustration that shows where you have more surface charges and where you have less. When you draw these cartoons, the important thing that I want you to keep in mind is that if the electric field has the same strength in your wire, make sure the difference is the same. Whether it's a difference of one or two, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure you maintain a constant difference. And how much you have, whether you have, you start with a five or six or seven pluses here, it doesn't really matter. The physics wise, um, the, it is the difference of the surface charge distribution that results in your electric field. That's what needs to be correct. Your electric field arrows, their strength needs to be consistent with the difference of your surface charges.